Good afternoon. Having the, having the slot after lunch is always difficult, so I'm going to shout. If you can't hear me at the back, please say. Anyway, good afternoon. Thank you very much, Rob, for inviting me. Thank you very much, starting off with what you guys all do in your community and for the Conservative Party. I know you're not all true blue uh, signed up in the way I am, but you're the most important level, actually, of the party because we don't have people in the communities our excellent, your excellent local MP, Caroline, couldn't do her job. It's as simple as that. You are the grassroots, so thank you for all that you do. So who on earth am I to those that I'm not, as somebody said the other day, a London version of Ruth Davidson. <laughs> but there is a bit of truth in that, because Ruth is the leader of the Scottish Parliament Conservatives. And I am part of what, it's an awful expression, but devolved assemblies. We have in this country devolved assemblies in Northern Ireland, in Scotland, in Wales, and in London. So those of you who are old enough, and you're all very young here, so you won't remember this, there was the London County Council after World War II, then there was the GLC, with Red Ken Livingstone, with Mrs Thatcher, abolished in the 80s, and then Mr. Fake himself, Tony Blair, set up the London Assembly, the GLA, in the year 2000. So for the last nearly two decades, the GLA has existed in London. First of all, it was Red Ken as the Mayor of London. Then we had a much better Mayor in Boris Johnson, who was there for eight years. And now we've got somebody who's so... So irrelevant, I'm not even going to name him on film, but he is a Labour, a Labour Mayor of London. So we have 25 Assembly members, and a dozen of them are constituency members like myself, and our job is to hold the Mayor to account. The Mayor has three substantial powers. He has the power to build homes, to get more houses, particularly for young people, affordable housing. He runs the transport system in London, so when you go up to go shopping or see your family or have a day out in London and the tube doesn't work, it's his fault. You can write to me and I will kick him for that. And the most serious uh, issue, in all seriousness, he has, he has, along with our Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, he has responsibility for the Met Police, the Police Service of London, and I'll come back to crime later because crime is one of the big issues at the moment. So effectively, that is what I do. I'm also a Westminster councillor. I had the great honour for the last 13 years of representing Knightsbridge and Belgravia, that, that very uh, marginal constituency, as people say. Actually, it's the second safest council seat in the country for our party, so I'm, I'm hugely honoured. And when I was first selected nearly 15 years ago, I had to go and see the most famous resident at the time. Fortunately, she's no longer with us, Lynn Thatcher. So I had to go and have an audience with Mrs T, and she said, well, I'm going to have to vote for you in local government now, Anthony. Don't let me down. <laughs> so that was a great honour, and she, she really was an amazing, uh, amazing woman. That's why, right back to the 1980s, that's why I went into politics, because actually, people can make a difference. If there's one message I want you to remember at the end of my speech, and I'll drone on for a few more minutes and then take questions, it's that people can make a difference, and we are not doomed. If you listen to some of the negative media commentary on the B word, which I'll come on to later, everybody would say we're doomed. We are not doomed. We are a great country. We will get through this, and whether you voted remain, or I understand this audience, only probably two people did, or leave, and I, I voted leave, so you won't live to me today anyway, I hope. The reality is, this country, in ten years' time, five years' time, certainly, will be an even better place than it is now. Our government is yeah. not perfect, no government is perfect. Lady Thatcher's government even wasn't perfect, though to me it was probably the most perfect government in the history of our party. But every government, people always have a go at who's in government. You know what? Running the country is difficult. Being a minister, as your excellent MP, Caroline, is, is difficult. She's got one of the best jobs in government. She's a really great minister. And I was with one of her colleagues only last night. 
you probably know the green paper for social care will be coming out soon once we get through the B word. Yeah. You know, those are the big issues that Conservative governments actually grasp. Okay, we didn't get it right during the last general election, that particular issue, but we will do because we've got hard working local MPs like Caroline, we've got great ministers like Caroline, and we've got a government that is going in the right direction. Yes, it's not perfect, but frankly, we are a lot better than the other party, even when they're run by decent people. And at the moment, I'll come back to Mr. Corbyn as well. Yes. So I'm a great believer that you've got to look at the glass really and say it's always half full and not half empty. So I wanted to start really by going on a bit about domestic politics. I know at the moment, it is a very unusual period. I've been in politics on and off for nearly 30 years. I'm older than I look, and <laughs> perhaps not. And people at the moment really don't see in the media as much as perhaps we should do. Us looking at issues like social care, the NHS, our schools, the police, defence. But these are issues that people in government are still looking at, and the economy still to me is always the issue. It is about what my mother's generation called the pocketbook. It is about making sure you've got the money to pay the bills, keep your family going. Those fundamental core conservative issues. And you know what? Yes, there are issues with the economy as always. There's lots of global change going. Retail, by the way, is not dead, as some people say, but it is changing. If 40% of us decide to shop online, and that's broadly the figure, the shops on your high street will have to change. There are lots of changes going on in terms of global trade at the moment. Some of the policies that some governments in parts of the world, Mr Putin for example, some of the naughty things he does, we've got challenges. But you know what? We've always had challenges. Again, my mother's 89, she always says, you know, my generation is wimpish compared to her generation. You know what? I have to agree, the World War II generation, they got through that, People have got through the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s and onwards, and they've got through these challenges. We've just got to show leadership. And this government, they are showing leadership. The Prime Minister, she does lead from the front. Now, I guess I best go on to the B word a little bit. I'm not going to predict what's going to happen next week, but I will predict that we will come together over the next few months and things will move forward. I even, if I had to be a betting person, I would say that we will go out of the EU with a deal over the next few weeks. I really believe we will. It won't be a deal that everybody in this room or the country or the party thinks is the best deal in the world, but I'm afraid that's life. I was a Dan Hannan Conservative Eurosceptic along with many people here. I went round the whole of South East England a decade ago as one of your MEP candidates. I am very Eurosceptic. I have no... Uh, belief that the EU is going to give us anything unless we negotiate hard. And the Prime Minister, whatever you think, has negotiated hard. It's never ideal, but I do believe we will get through this. And I think we have to be positive. I go around the country a lot. Most people are with people with real jobs and real lives, not people in the media village that I unfortunately bump into far too much, do believe this country's best days are in front of us and not behind us. So that is my key message. I say a little bit about exactly uh, what's happening in London. And I think when I say London, I'm, I'm down here, people say, what does that matter to me? Well, the whole UK economy is basically predicated on South East England, which includes you guys, and London actually getting out there and producing tax take. And you do it because most of you get up, even now, every day, and you go to work. You work hard year after year after year. You build your businesses. You work in our public services. So a huge thank you to all of you. That's why, ultimately, I do believe the future is going to be better. There are issues, particularly in London at the moment, that many of them you won't be particularly as excited by as I am, but there are a lot of things the party has to do, particularly in terms of particularly focusing on how we appeal to the BME communities. We haven't succeeded as much as we should do in getting people that don't look much like much of us in this audience today to vote Conservative. But we've got an amazing candidate as Mayor of London next year. Sean Bailey 
somebody who's actually done that wonderful British thing of actually getting out in life, making something of himself. He didn't go to a certain school that always gets mentioned in politics, uh, which, uh, by the way, I didn't go to either. He literally lived on a North Kensington council estate, very close to where the Grenfell fire was. He went to state schools, he got himself educated, he became a community outwork for each worker, and he's worked his way up in politics. He's a colleague of mine on the London Assembly. He is incredibly good at cutting through in the media. And if anybody can get us to win the way Boris did in London, it's Sean. So if anybody fancies a weekend out knocking on doors in London, you're more than welcome. Uh, if you'd like just to shake his hand at party conference in the autumn, that's fine too. If you'd like to write a check, even better. <laughs> he, he is a fantastic guy. And I believe, you know, the thing about politics at the moment, it is very, very uncertain. People are disillusioned across the political <coughs> class uh, with the whole situation. But I do believe positive leadership, which at a London level, Sean is certainly offering, we will get there. The Prime Minister will keep battling on as well and things will be better. So thank you so much. What I really enjoy these sessions is actually hearing from you rather than me, as David Cameron used to say, bang on for hours. So I'd like to hear your points on law and order, your points on the economy. Dare I say it, your points on the B word? Possibly not, but please do. So thank you very, very much for all you do for our party. You do far more than I see we've all got raffle tickets, but it's not just the raffle tickets. It's everything else that you do for our party. It really is appreciated. Thank you very much, uh, Rob. Thank you to everybody, and I look forward to your questions.